Many children are escaping some sort of persecution in their home country. Uh, other children are escaping abuse, abandonment, or neglect by one or both of their parents. Kids are taking incredible risks to come into the United States illegally. Good evening and thanks for joining us. For your local news on ABC5, I'm Anna Hayes and I'll have more on that story in just a moment. But first, we're dealing with some early signs of summer here in the valley. Take one step outside and that's very obvious. In fact, right now, the National Weather Service says these hot temperatures will continue through the weekend. According to the service's website, we're going to feel some of the hottest temperatures so far this year over the next few days, reaching up to 110 degrees. You're taking a live look outside now with our Remax Tower camera, and we're wrapping up Heat Awareness Week today, so it's a good time to remember that heat is a serious health threat. Even the most seasoned residents may be affected, so you know the drill. Stay hydrated, stay inside, and don't be afraid to turn on that AC. And as always, never leave children or pets inside a car for any amount of time. Let's take a look at our current temperatures. Right now in Yuma, 89 degrees with some clouds out there. A major change from our 6 p.m. show here on ABC5 where we were at 104 degrees at 6 o'clock in the evening. We're at 86 degrees over in El Centro. Let's check in now with forecaster Nicole Gomez. She's here with a sneak peek at your local weather. Well, let's start out by taking a look at this morning's temperature, 64 in Blythe, or 66, I should say, 69 in Yuma. So we were off to a mild start. A 64 Imperial 75 was the low this morning in Mexicali. So as you can see, we're off to a pretty good, comfortable start this morning. And yesterday, our temperatures actually hit the triple digits. We'll take a look at today's highs coming up in your full forecast. But coming up, we'll also talk about how long the warm temperatures will remain in the forecast and if the winds will return. That's all coming up in your local weather. Back to you. Thanks so much, Nicole. Well, the weather in Southern California is making for a perfect storm. Dry heat and winds are fueling fires that have scorched more than 20,000 acres. As the recovery effort begins in several areas, firefighters are still battling a major blaze on a military base. And tonight, a man has been charged in one of the smaller fires. ABC's Devin Dwyer reports from Escondido, California. Today, U.S. Marines fighting fire at home. Three massive wildfires exploding on Camp Pendleton near San Diego. The general on the base evacuating all non-essential personnel. Elsewhere, firefighters were making progress. Engine 31, we need more pressure. Containing most of the blazes that have ravaged Southern California and terrorized residents. Oh my, oh my God. God! Oh my God! From the air today, huge fields of gray ash with pockets of green. Houses saved amidst complete devastation. In Escondido, T.D. Walton counted his blessings as he toured his neighbor's burned out house. The stuff here you see around here are remnants of 30 years worth of life of their family. I've never experienced anything like this. Dozens of homes have been destroyed or damaged by the fires and at least one life was lost. Hundreds of people are still evacuated, some spending the night in shelters. Police have arrested three people accused of starting smaller wildfires in the area, but are still unsure whether they're behind a major blaze. Alberto Serrato is the uh, Oceanside Police Department uh, case. Uh, he's being charged with 451D, which is arson. Fire officials say at least one of this week's fires was started by accident at a construction project. The smoke from these fires is clouding the skies of Los Angeles 100 miles north of here. Residents hope clear, calm, cool weather the next few days will help with recovery efforts. Devin Dwyer, ABC News, Escondido, California. While that fire continues to burn near Pendleton, the Marines are stepping in to save their own space and other parts of the state. Take a look at these pictures. They're of the 3rd Marine Aircraft Wing from MCAS Miramar. The team took 21 aircraft equipped with water dispensing buckets to help control the Tomahawk fire. The team spent about 80 hours in the air just yesterday and dropped about 72,000 gallons of water today. 
And the Navy has released an environmental report that could help determine where to place fleets of the F-35C aircraft. The choices right now are NAFL Central or a Naval Air Station in Lemoore, California. You may recall over the last few months, the military was asking for public input. The Navy says that input was a valuable part of the placement process. And now you can see the results of its study. If you want easy access, check out the report online at the address you see on your screen, or you can view hard copies at any one of these locations. There is now a 30-day waiting period, after which a decision will be made as to whether or not the fleet will be based in El Centro. Several Southern California counties are getting behind renewable energy to boost restoration of the Salton Sea. Six counties, including Imperial, adopted a resolution supporting the IID's Salton Sea Restoration and Renewable Energy Initiative. The initiative will help the state reduce inflow to the Salton Sea, which will help control the water levels. That, in turn, will provide access to geothermal resources that could provide clean, renewable energy to the state grid. In addition, sale of that energy could provide a much-needed economic boost to the Imperial Valley. Three and a half million dollars in five days. That's how productive Customs and Border Protection has been at the Port of Nogales and Douglas. The agency says on Wednesday alone, four seizures netted a combined 7,000 pounds of marijuana, three pounds of heroin and 14 pounds of meth. Several people were arrested. All of the drugs and vehicles were seized. It's estimated that as many as 70,000 unaccompanied minors will make their way into the U.S. next year. They're arriving through ports throughout California and Arizona, but the majority are using the Texas-Mexico border. ABC's April Molina takes a look at the unbelievable journey these children will face. It starts in Mexico and often further south in Guatemala, El Salvador or Honduras. Many children are escaping some sort of persecution in their home country. Uh, other children are escaping abuse, abandonment or neglect by one or both of their parents. It is a high stakes journey. Children leaving their family, trading the only life they know for the hope of security and freedom in America. They make the trip on foot, by bus, and oftentimes crowded into boxcars or on top of trains. They're trying to escape, try, trying to avoid detection, and sometimes, right, they don't make it. They will fall off. Sometimes I've heard stories of children falling under trains while they're rolling. Their coordinates are 27.227. Unaccompanied minors who make it across the border often go miles out of the way to circumvent checkpoints. It gets pretty darn dark out there. And then you got all the animals to deal with. Brooks County is one of the most dangerous parts of the journey. Immigrants travel for miles through this brush, sometimes trudging through the sand in the heat without food or water. The real young ones that, that they, they, they become a victim within the group or they get assaulted. What I would refer to the secrets of the brush because they're going to stay there because they're victims anyway. They're already here illegally. Girls could be assaulted. They could be sexually assaulted, and which makes them then crime victims in the United States, which would allow them the protections of our laws here in the country. Attorney Eric Tijerina, who helps immigrants navigate the legal system, says many kids are granted relief from deportation, in which case they could end up in long-term foster care. For minors in limbo, there are shelters where kids will be housed, fed, clothed, and educated as they await their day in court to find out whether they will be sent back to the country they came from. That was ABC's April Molina reporting for us tonight. In the meantime, representatives of Amnesty International are criticizing the Mexican government for what they said is a lack of commitment to protect human rights. An agency rep said this week that President Enrique Peña Nieto hasn't done much since the beginning of the year to improve conditions. In an open letter addressed to Nieto, the human rights organization urged him to start taking action on issues such as torture, executions, and kidnappings. They also asked for immediate assistance for victims of crimes. Tourism is one of Yuma's biggest industries, so what's being done to attract visitors in the quietest months of the year? We'll tell you, plus pork producers are beefing up their prices to just in time for growing season. This is your local news on ABC5. Stay with us. The new auxiliary landing field at Marine Corps Air Station Yuma is once again taking center stage. Take a look at these incredible pictures. The ALF, as it's called, is designed for pilots to use for field carrier landing practice. The Marine Attack Squadron 214 will eventually have to land on aircraft carriers, so the crews are prepping ahead for any major operations. Yuma's population doubles during the winter season, but when summer arrives, most of our visitors flock to the north. But a new campaign launching in a couple of months could attract a different crowd. 
We plan to market to more of the foreign tourists, um, Europeans in particular, who really enjoy the sunshine and like the warm weather and are looking for authentic experiences and um, outdoor activities. The Arizona Office of Tourism is joining forces with the Yuma Visitors Bureau to promote summertime visits using a statewide campaign. Linda Morgan told us a lot of people from Southern California come visit Yuma, but with about 350 days every year full of sunshine, she hopes all of our outdoor activities will draw visitors during our warm season as well. So that's really nice for us in that we get to basically double our advertising dollars um, to promote Yuma year round. The Yuma Visitors Bureau will meet in Phoenix for the annual Governor's Conference on Tourism in July to begin planning Yuma's year-round promotion. Imagine being on a plane 20 seconds away from a mid-air collision. Tonight, a passenger on a flight from Hawaii to Los Angeles turns detective. He was sure there had been a close call at 33,000 feet right outside his window, and he was right. Here's ABC's Jim Avila. 30,000 feet above the Hawaiian Islands, two passenger jets with more than 400 people aboard on a collision course, forcing the pilots to take dramatic, evasive action. It was a scary experience. Uh, passengers screamed. There was a coffee pot in the back that fell down. A young passenger behind me started crying. Townsend, an internet blog writer, found that as the jets barreled towards disaster, an automatic radar alarm called TCAS sounded in both cockpits. By then, the two passenger jets were heading directly at each other, eight miles away from possible impact, when the collision alert sounded, and the United jet went into emergency descent, diving 800 feet, avoiding tragedy. After we leveled out, the flight attendant actually got on the loudspeaker and told us that the pilot had maneuvered the aircraft to avoid another plane in our flight path. At a flight simulator in suburban Washington, a pilot trainer showed me how it works. Traffic. So he's now alerting, and there he is. So the pilot has to take action as soon as you hear traffic. Exactly. How close was this call? At airliner cruise speed of 500 miles per hour, the two planes were heading towards each other at 1,000 miles per hour. Eight miles apart, that gave the pilots under 25 seconds to react. Tonight, an FAA NTSB team is in Hawaii to investigate what forced the split-second life-saving maneuver. Jim Avila, ABC News, Washington. While summer means barbecues, one thing that will surely affect grilling season is the price of meat. We've been warning you about the rising cost of beef, and now meat producers are beefing up the price of pork. In fact, nationwide prices are up 13% from last year. It's all because of a virus sweeping parts of the nation. The problems that are going on do not have any possibility of, of, of having foodborne illness in humans. It is a, uh, it's a, uh, a uh, disease that affects the younger animals. There you have it. The disease won't affect people, but it is killing pigs, causing supply to go down just as demand is going up. Detling says that's simple economics. He also says the increased prices are minimal compared to the pork industry's losses. The timing of that price increase is unfortunate because barbecue season is just heating up and you may be in the market for a new grill. Your local news anchor Christy Wilcox wants you to be ready for the most delicious part of the summer. Christy, what's cooking? Well, Anna, I don't know if you're one of those people who are going to bring out your tongs this summer season and grill out or if you're going to try to beat the heat and get out of Yuma, Arizona. However, some people might be considering buying a new grill. And if you are, Consumer Reports tells us that it's the time to do so if you're going to do it now. Well, you know, this is actually a really good time if you need a grill to buy a grill because grill price, grill uh, sales have stalled and prices are pretty stable. So that's bad for manufacturers, but it's really good for you because they're putting more of those premium features that we're talking about on lower priced grills. Okay, so Consumer Report also says you should be prepared to spend between $200 and $700. What does that mean for you? Well, I would count my pennies in my piggy bank first to make sure how much money you really want to spend on your summer grill. You know, we don't want to spend too much money, I guess. And the also, the other thing to look at is the size of the grill. I call it uh, Goldilocks and the Three Little Bears. You want to make sure that it's not too small, not too big. It's just right for you and your family. You don't want to overdo it. And the other thing you're going to look at is stainless steel versus the black box. Now, 
they both get the job done, right? There's no, no problem getting the job done. It's a ma matter of aesthetics. And then the next thing is your stainless steel or cast iron grill. So that's the grate here that you're going to cook all your meats and vegetables and everything on. And that just means that if you get your, your uh, stainless steel or your cast iron, that uh, you'll be able to displace the heat across the grill rather than cooking really heavily on one side or the other. And last thing is your storage facility so or storage area. So you can have grills that have it on the front, have it on the side, and uh, that kind of beats having to run to the kitchen, run back from the kitchen, run to the kitchen, you know, that whole routine that we used to do, but it certainly makes it a little more convenient for preparing or pre-prep before uh, you get all those hungry eaters in, uh, in front of you. So reporting for your local news, in HD, I'm Christy Wilcox. I'm going to send it back to you in the studio. Thanks, Christy. While well, the skeleton of a young woman is found 13,000 years after her death, it's an incredible find, and I'll tell you about it next on your local news. Plus, Nicole Gomez will be back with your complete local forecast. Stay with us. Welcome back to your local news. As we mentioned earlier, summer means grilling out. It also means splashing around in the pool. And without a warning from the CDC, injuries from pool chemicals are on the rise. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention released a new study this week that says there were nearly 5,000 ER visits last year from chemical-related injuries. Nearly half of the injuries were in children and teenagers, and more than a third occurred at home. Pool chemical injuries were most common during the summer swim season from Memorial Day to Labor Day. Day. Experts say to avoid injury, follow all directions on labels, wear safety gear, and never mix chemicals. If you're headed out of town for the Memorial Day weekend, it's coming up. You'll have plenty of company. AAA Auto Club estimates 36.1 million Americans will travel 50 miles or more from home. Of those traveling for, for Memorial Day, 31.8 million will go by automobile, 2.6 million will fly out of town, and nearly 2 million will go by train, bus, or ship. Again, we've got those triple digits hanging around for the weekend, so take shelter. Here's Nicole Gomez again with your complete local weather forecast. Hi, Nicole. Well, so far, these are the hottest temperatures we've had uh, to date. 108 in Mexicali, Imperial, 109 in El Centro, 106 in Blythe, and 107 is the high we hit today in Yuma. So we have been talking about heat awareness all week, and today's focus focus is to be smart. Now, if you are going to be outside, make sure you wear light colored clothing. Also, you want to make sure you put on that sunblock, take frequent breaks if you do have to be outside, and as always, make sure you stay hydrated. The reason we are seeing these very hot temperatures is because of ridge of high pressure that is currently out to our west and expect the hot temperatures to remain in the forecast through your weekend. Now, as far as the winds, it will be a little breezy on Saturday and Sunday with gusts in the 20s. And for the start of the work week, we're still talking winds in the 20s. Stronger winds will return to the forecast on Wednesday with gusts at 30 miles per hour. But as of now, it looks like those winds will die down by your Thursday and Friday. 71 will be the low tonight in Blythe. Quartzsite also sitting in the 70s. Tomorrow, again, another hot day with plenty of sunshine. And again, make sure you drink plenty of water. Comfortable temperatures tonight for Calexico with hot temperatures in the forecast tomorrow at 106. 69 Salton City, high tomorrow 106. Imperial also sitting at 106 degrees for tomorrow. Overnight temperatures in Yuma will drop down to 72. Again, it's going to be hot tomorrow. Southwest winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. 66, the low overnight low for El Centro with another hot day tomorrow at 106 degrees. So it will be hot on Saturday, Sunday 102. We have a slight cool down with our next system that will move through and pick up our winds on Tuesday. Stronger winds the forecast on Wednesday. We remain in the 90s through Thursday and Friday. Back to you. Thanks, Nicole. Well, researchers say they found the ancient remains of a teenage Mexican girl. They say they say they found the 13,000-year-old skeleton in an underwater cave. Scientists have analyzed small samples of bone and tooth. Archaeologist Jim Chatters believes these remains may create a conclusive link between the first Americans and Native Americans. Very cool discovery. General Motors is in more hot water this time. The feds are affording the company to cough up some big bucks. That's next, but first, Jimmy Kimmel wants to spend this Friday night with you.
Welcome back to your local news on ABC5. The NAACP celebrates 60 years since the Brown v. Board of Education landmark ruling. The historical Supreme Court ruling ordered the desegregation of all public schools across the country. U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder delivered remarks this afternoon at the Legal, Defense and Educational Fund luncheon. Holder noting how the ruling was a pivotal moment for civil rights in America, but he says there is still much work to be done. In these and other efforts, there are undoubtedly difficult times ahead. Challenges old and new remain before us. There are, there are too many who are wedded to the past and who irrationally fear the new America that is emerging. They misconstrue our past. America has been at its best when we have acted to embrace and make positive the changes we have been forced to confront. Some argue that there is still unofficial segregation within America's schools based on city demographics. According to UCLA analysis of education department data, 73% of white students are likely to attend a predominantly white school, while 57% of Latino students are also likely to attend a majority Latino school. President Barack Obama and Vice President Joe Biden called on Congress today to beef up infrastructure and transportation spending. The power duo met with four workers from a local redevelopment group for lunch at a Shake Shack, one of my favorite places to eat on the East Coast. The workers are part of a $9.1 million project to rebuild one of D.C.'s fastest growing neighbors. Yeah, it is a no-brainer for Congress to do what it's supposed to do, pass transportation funding. We can do it without adding to the deficit, simply by getting rid of some corporate tax loopholes that aren't creating jobs uh, and are basically giveaways to folks who don't need them. The president says if Congress doesn't pass a transportation funding bill this summer, projects could be forced to shut down and put construction workers out of jobs. The federal government said today that General Motors must pay a whopping $35 million penalty because of its failure to report a major safety defect. If issues with the ignition switches on Chevy Cobalt and Saturn Ions resulted in at least 13 deaths. ABC's Karen Travers has the details now from Washington. Today, the federal government dropped the hammer on General Motors. What we cannot tolerate, what we will never accept, is a person or a company that knows danger exists and says nothing. Literally, silence can kill. The automaker must pay a $35 million fine for failing to address a major safety defect that resulted in at least 13 deaths. It's the maximum penalty the government could levy, but some said it wasn't enough. Since January, the automaker has recalled 2.6 million vehicles because their ignition switches could turn off unexpectedly, shutting down the car power and safety systems, including the airbag. Records indicate GM knew about the problem as early as 2001, but didn't address it. Last month, GM CEO Mary Barra was grilled by lawmakers. Today's GM will do the right thing. This begins with my sincere apologies to everyone who's been affected by this recall. We are the people left behind when a loved one got into what was supposed to be a safe car, a GM car, a car that GM knew for years was dangerous and defective. Transportation Secretary Fox said these penalties should put all automakers on notice. There is no excuse and zero tolerance for failing to notify the federal government when a defect puts safety at risk. General Motors has not yet said what sort of compensation, if any, it will give to the victims' families. Karen Travers, ABC News, Washington. Marijuana may be legal in some states, but the Securities and Exchange Commission is warning investors against buying pot stocks. Regulators say the risk of fraud is too great. The warning comes after the SEC suspended trading shares in some pot companies, including Denver-based um, company uh, Fusion Farm, based up on questions about the accuracy of financial statements. The bottom line, investors should do their homework on pot stocks or else their portfolio might go up in smoke. You may have watched that Barbara Walters special just before we went on the air. It was amazing. You probably know she signed off for the final time this morning. To honor the legendary anchor woman, look what one super fan did. I'll tell you more when your local news on ABC5 comes back. Stay with us. All day long, we're celebrating Barbara Walters and her groundbreaking career, all those first and big interviews, and lots of fun, too. Here's George Stephanopoulos with some of the priceless moments that made us laugh.
Over 50 years through hundreds of interviews, Barbara asked the questions we all wanted to hear. Bootylicious. <laughs> exactly what does it mean? <laughs> At 88 and a half years old, does one still have sex? If one gets lucky, I bet they do. <laughs> you think I'm getting jiggy with it? Or do I, you are do truly... I strike you as being awful square? No, no, you're truly the I'm getting jiggy? You're the jiggiest. jiggiest. <laughs> Everybody says Justin Timberlake is bringing sexy back. Where did it go? I have no earthly idea. <laughs> but for all Barbara's no, vast talents, we have learned that she isn't good at everything. Like sports, for example. Just pop it right in. I am woman, <laughs> hear me roar. And numbers too high. Whack the ball. Oh, now God. Oh, that's so embarrassing in front that's of everybody. Close. Remember Terminator? <laughs> and they died here. I go, what's all get cocky? I like that. Hey, I can play basketball. And while her voice is definitely distinctive, it may not have been meant for singing. And he think be glad just to be sad singing with you. Oh, <laughs> he said if I, he, he said, said if I, be lifted up. I'm doing the song. Uh, no, all you got to do is repeat okay. after me. <laughs> hey, solo already, solo. But Barbara was always game, especially for a dance. Some a little risque. What are you doing with your hands? hands? Anything that feels good. Actually, if you put them on. How are you feeling? I'm so kind of special. Wait, look at me, baby. Come on. Here I don't we want are. to do there are no questions. You know what I <laughs> Most just sweet. One, two, one, two, three. You come a lot to these dances? <laughs> only, comes... when, only when there are strangers. <laughs> Here comes the dip. Three, four, two, three, turn, two, three. All right, good, good. I'm the first woman to get a Barbara Walters tattoo. I'm a pioneer, too. <laughs> Nobody's got Barbara Walters. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. A New Orleans woman is paying tribute to Barbara Walters by getting a tattoo of the television icon. Liz Dodd inked the babs on her leg. Dodd said there was no doubt in her mind she wanted a tattoo of Walters once she found out she was retiring. That's dedication right there. I'm a big Barbara Walters fan, but I don't know if I could ever do that, but props to her. Thanks for joining us tonight. We hope that ABC5 News will be your choice once again on Monday when we come back. Jimmy Kimmel starts now. Stay tuned for that and have a great weekend.